Hello, dear friends. Welcome to yet another episode of the Life Positive Show. It is my privilege to introduce you to Ramesh Ji and Kusum Ji, an enlightened couple from Hyderabad, whose simple yet profound teachings are awakening seekers to their true identity. Guruji, as he is known, was a businessman, and, and Guru Ma was a, was a housewife until the bug of spirituality bit Guruji really hard. Husband and wife ventured into spirituality together and emerged a few years later enlightened, and that too on the same day. Their teaching focuses more on unlearning rather than learning. The seeker is encouraged to leave behind rites, rituals, uh, and practices in favor of discovering his natural way of being. This method seems to be remarkably effective because Guruji says that most of his followers are already established in enlightenment. Enough said, it's time to discover this enlightened couple for yourself. Lovely to have both of you. Really happy to have you. I was saying that uh, we are one. Mm. We are to be two. Wonderful. That's a beautiful equation and relationship. And we'll go a little deeper into that. Not so, I don't know whether you know anything about me, but I uh, have been working with Life Positive for about 21 years and I was its editor for 12 years. Okay. And, um, I retired in uh, 2017. I now hold uh, writer's workshops. I'm a facilitator and trainer in writing. Okay. That's about me. And of course, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a very deep uh, seeker as well. Excellent. That's very nice. That's, that's, that's spirituality is my passion. Hmm. So, you have been all along in Mumbai or? Uh... Oh, well, since the age of 16. My, uh, what do they say? My dharma kshetra has definitely been Mumbai. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. So we'll go ahead with the interview. Yeah? Yes. It's being recorded. Yeah. So uh, Guruji, um, I, I read that before entering spirituality. And you know, um, since both of you are there, please feel free, um, Guruma, to also speak. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. She, she'll take that liberty. Don't bother. He <laughs> or she, because whatever you ask or whatever we discuss or talk about, Sometimes it may come through my mouth. Sometimes it may come through her mouth. Now, it's a beautiful equation. Would you say that both of you are uh, enlightened? I mean, I'm just asking you this question. Yeah, we, we believe so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely fortunate because I know many people, uh, you know, married couples, one goes onto the path, the other doesn't. And that's actually... A, they are opposite. Yeah, it becomes a it it becomes a uh, you know a, a bit of a conflict area for them thereafter because one is left behind and the other moves on. So this is amazing that both of you have been going step by step onto the path. It's it's remarkable actually. We have been always together. I mean, even before I got into spirituality, hmm. uh, even when I was in business. Yeah. I mean, if I go out anywhere, we would go together. Huh. Traveled whole world together. Mm, mm. Equality we got into together. Mm. Same guru, same Swamiji. Mm, mm, and mm. Uh, the best part is that we both got enlightened on the same day. This is simply amazing. I have not come across an, ex uh, as, uh, an example like this. Simply fantastic. I share with you that uh, even though the guru was the same, mm. like Swamiji, but uh, the practices which we were following yeah. were very really different. Achha. Quite different. Uh -huh -huh. I got into a lot of uh, Hatha Yoga practices. Mm -hmm. She was in two different her own uh, you know practices. Mm -hmm. of seva. Seva. Because that was your nature. Yeah, that was. How oh, wonderful! Both of you were doing what was your nature, what was natural. More of contemplative. Mm -hmm. She was Seva with mm -hmm. Swamiji, you know, mm -hmm. sharing with us some stories, moral mm -hmm. stories. <clears throat> and uh, her interest was uh, listening to movie songs. Uh -huh. 
and you want these which are deeply spiritual also the older ones definitely all all the songs older ones new ones uh, raps any song you give she can bring out the best spiritual meaning out of those songs wonderful that was her forte and i was never interested in sp- these songs mm. i was more of into you know meditation contemplation mm. she was into songs mm. and eventually we met at that enlightened day it was the same for both of us so oh, amazing <laughs> amazing wonderful now i sing more songs and she contemplates more on gyana <laughs> So it's a plus. You were both really a twin souls, totally soulmates. Every day I had to sing some songs, movie songs, and for her, and she would sing <laughs> piano. <laughs> so was yours an arranged marriage or was it a love marriage? Yeah, uh, I think arranged marriage. Arranged, arranged, but still you found each other. Sorry. Obviously, you know, for me, yeah. there was least system of love marriage. No. arranged marriage turned into love turned into love i mean definitely as they say it is marriages are made in heaven yeah. so you were definitely meant to be together it's it's one the marriages are made in hell sometimes <laughs> now but what they mean is there's a divine intent to all marriages which i think is very right i mean it's karmic most of the time 90% of couples they don't have any commonality <laughs> they are opposite in nature so marriages are made not really in heaven somewhere else for them to settle their karmic accounts yes but they don't know that you know karmic account has to be opposite there has to be a debit then there has to be a credit mm. only then it gets settled absolutely not being aware of this they continue with their differences and allow the differences to increase yeah completely agree with you very few people who try to bridge the gap between their differences so i believe it is not made in heaven but somewhere else <laughs> <laughs> so um, what about your relationship your karmic account is already clear it appears one back huh? that is why we became one as i told you we are not two we uh-huh. appear to be two uh-huh. but at consciousness level we are one at at emotional level we are one we appear to be two two physical bodies so two physical two minds senses but otherwise at consciousness level we are one definitely one fantastic wow that's a book that needs to be written uh, guru ji yeah now about you... guru ma since neither of you can do it yeah, it's it's amazing i mean it will be highly inspiring for people because as you say marital discord is one of the is it, it, it's it's everywhere it's so common you know that you can have this sort of a finely attuned relationship between each other in fact among followers whenever there is only one person comes to us we ensure that the spouse also comes because we believe unless both husband and wife they walk together on this path they will not get the real benefit beautiful so 99% or i should say 100% are followers not only husband wife Which their is children their the parents, family we try to attract the entire family and we love children so much that they bring their parents with them so in fact now you are there probably you can think of writing some book on you know husband wife relationship why they get married what is the purpose how they should settle their karmic account how they should they should walk together and the mathematical equation of 1 plus 1 2 becomes 1 plus 1 11 when they walk together on the same path no oh, absolutely that absolutely. is the spiritual people call 1 plus 1 11 not 1 plus 1 2 uh, and the benefit we have seen in our lives mm. is incredible mm. i can well imagine i mean i envy you both <laughs> okay so let's get on to the other this is itself a very fascinating introduction to the interview and i'm definitely keep talking anything i mean it's it's fine Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, before entering spirituality, you were a successful businessman. Thank and you. Uh, so, tell me a little bit about you know your that that side of your life and uh, what business you were pursuing and. Uh, my. And, father, and also, Guru Ma has to tell me what she was doing at that point. <laughs> yes. I was a typical homemaker. Um, 
she was a husband maker <laughs> so you neither of you i mean you you mentioned in uh, an interview that ashish had sent me that uh, you were not interested in spirituality at all guru ma at least used to go to temples and all that Yeah. but uh, it and, and i think i also remember you uh, saying that you were not even interested much in studies and <laughs> but you still became a very good businessman how come i believe studies are they have no not much role in becoming a businessman in fact uh, a studious uh, student cannot become a good student a good businessman he goes more with logic and business is all about gut feeling you know what bill gates has said once that me and my friend studied together while they were doing engineering and his one of the best friend was a gold medalist today he works for microsoft and i own microsoft that is what bill gates had said that's very true i've seen that over so, and in fact i later on realized that uh, st- if i would have been a good student i probably would not have been a good businessman so it helped me not being a good so what student. are the qualities that you had that made you a good businessman apart from gut instinct one was gut feeling number two good nature behavior very good behavior in what Let's sense talk about my behavior yeah 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 i'd love to hear what in what sense like uh, guru ji had an aspect which none of his friends or in the circle had that aspect he would take everyone along uh-huh. it was not only my forte he uh-huh. said you can also come you can also come everyone is equal with me uh-huh. and those who did not get along with other business people they were the favorites of guru ji because he used to give them the respect the like you are the best you you also help me you are very good come and help me so everyone was taken along with guruji for any business deal also and there was no cutthroat competition also he was open to all like yeah. uh, nothing to hide in business so that is very very spiritual on your part yeah that's what it is in blood only i feel <laughs> in my was spiritual but the nature was such that it was very spiritual yeah. Yeah, in fact i used to invite my competitors to my factory show them all secrets wow and uh, there there used to be many competitors around our factory in the same industrial area and you know everyone want uh, 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 good uh, workers good supervisors you know skilled people so we were the second largest in the country in one of the sector which was that sector if you don't mind sharing uh it was uh, hdp woven sacks the bags which are used for packing fertilizers and cement right okay you know those plastic bags which are woven yeah. <clears throat> yeah 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 got it so we were second biggest in the country and there were 30 40 you know units uh, around our in hyderabad around our place and being the largest we had lot of skill manpower everybody wanted uh, skill manpower they used these two take away our people i called everyone i showed them all the factory i told them whoever wants any skilled person from me just send me the name of that person i will remove that person you take that person how oh, beautiful don't me say give them you know twice the salary three times the salary because when you try to take away some person mm-hmm. you have offer double the salary triple the okay. salary and uh, you know a worker would be given a supervisor's post unless all those you know freebies or you know attractions are given nobody would leave uh, our factory <clears throat> managers would be given gm post so i used to help like that i don't yeah. know why, but <laughs> so i think it looks like you had no insecurity absolutely no zero <clears throat> in fact uh, major fertilizer companies cement companies used to float tenders you know for purchasing these bags and uh, maybe 10 20 30 of us we would go you know file those tenders i was the person who would open my tender and show them my rate and i used to tell them you can fill up little lower than my rate and you get the orders <coughs> you know this is really like spiritual business 
this is really spiritualizing business and especially for the smaller units like you we used to have we had uh, some 40 imported uh, circular looms first time in the country we imported and there used to be small units with four four looms six looms i used to just tell them you take the orders you you first fill up your stomach i would get somewhere else i don't i don't care don't bother about me if i if you quote you know 5 rupees per bag i would tell them you quote 4 rupees 95 and get the order amazing and this actually worked in your favor i mean obviously yes, always frankly yeah? it used to work in my favor in our favor because even those big companies they knew that i am doing this hmm. if they wanted say 10 lakh bags and all the small people would fill up that 10 lakh bags order those companies used to increase their requirement to 20 lakh bags and give me 10 lakhs order at wow. my price <laughs> so i was i used to get benefited also and so this it, is the way of the universe it's beautiful i i always believe that competition is in the mind you don't really have to you know fear competition if you are open today in spirituality uh, we tell people that you try to attract positive vibes that is enough your fate your destiny will get made just by those positive vibes you earn blessings totally so somehow this is what you know we were doing like if i am helping smaller units I, I used to feel good. So today I realized that was a spiritual concept. Unknowingly we were following mm. and we used to get a lot of positive vibes. Mm. <coughs> and actually Guruji's father and Guruji never used to promote enmity. Mm. Should not have enemies. Mm. They used to go out of the way even if the other person had some negative thoughts against them. Go and ask forgiveness if we have done any wrong, and they would just maintain relationships, cordial relationship with everyone. So your father was also like this, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. father. <laughs> this all came from my father. So a lot of genetic uh, you know, thing he, is also. He's he's still there today. <laughs> you won't believe. 90, 91 years old. Eight to ten hours he's on computer. Every day he eats samosa, kachori, pizza, pasta. <laughs> oh my, I wish he'd give me a bit of that stomach. <laughs> Every second day he asks my son, what happened? You didn't swiggy. I want, it's been long, Manchuria noodles. You didn't get for me. <laughs> and in my lifespan, I have not seen him shouting or getting angry. Not even once. My goodness. That's it heavy serious impact on my mind also because for 65 years I have not seen him getting angry irritated anxious never ever and he has gone through such phases in life that he was on top he became zero he was on top he became zero but never zero internally he never bothered I mean couple of months I knew <clears throat> he had nothing to even feed the family. But there was never any stress in his mind. And being in business, he followed one concept which also had an impact on me. He was a 9 to 5 person. He was an industrialist, one of the pioneer industrialists in Hyderabad. He is only 7th standard. And he used to make machines to produce electrical cables. Such an inquisitive person he was. His nature, his discipline, everything, you know, it. I imbibed. It, it just got into my genes. I think that ready-made benefit I had. Yes. You earned it. Just like I didn't earn anything. It, it just as came. A, as a gift. <laughs> as a gift. No, he earned it in some other past life. No, that's why he became his son. <laughs> so, what about you, Guruma? Were you also equally? Did you come from an equally evolved uh, family? We can say not evolved, but it was similar. Middle class family. My father was very contented with what he had. A small shop. 
he was not into i have to earn more i have to earn never after money very good life he gave us contented mm-hmm. life enjoy life mm-hmm. and he also didn't uh, propagate to have enemies he was well with all his friends and he used to play and we all had this hereditary we put on weight so he used to make us exercise his father also it was similar but in a different fields yes qualities were the same but Quality. in different ways i was very, yeah sorry yeah i was very good at delegation <clears throat> i think that is one of the another major aspect of uh, a successful business man right unless you delegate you trust people make them feel more responsible yes yes frankly even i was very disciplined in business yeah 9 to 6 was my time 9 o'clock i would leave my house and 6 o'clock i am back and before 9 i never used to talk about business after 6 no business beautiful jo the Well, they talk about work life balance but you struck it right from the start totally and after 6 it's only family time before 9 it was my time before 9 am my time 9 to 6 office time after 6 family time now i i don't know if i have written in my book i i tell people to divide 24 hours into three segments 8 hours each let 8 hours be for your own self which includes sleep meditation whatever 8 hours for your profession business 8 hours for family never compromise on family time and give more time to your work you can reduce your work time give to family but never take away family time or your own time and give to work beautiful this is amazing so that one of the my principles that you teach your uh, uh, followers as well yeah yeah wonderful marvelous so one aspect which i got in after getting married here was my father and i wanted to promote all the ladies of the house wow not do housework you should not go to the kitchen you become a good business woman but as such i was not interested i went for a year or two but i was happy as a homemaker only that was your inclination it was that was what you were interested in that's so beautiful and so it's such an important thing as well so um how did the shift uh, i read that there was this one point when you felt what next can you tell me a little bit about that phase what happened uh say for almost 20 years i was in business and uh, every moment of those 20 years we enjoyed life every moment whether i was in office or at family in family or traveling outside we both traveled mm-hmm. entire world the country enjoyed thoroughly friend circle partying everything money wealth creation name fame i was very high profile when i was in business i would ensure that every day at least you know at least once in two days i should be reported in the newspaper acha for the next or the other i had many reporters as friends and i used to meet prime minister rajiv gandhi several times i was a president of the association all india association everything i did so much that probably one would do in 100 years i did in 20 years then i i felt so contented of that life then a thought started coming to me that i am working i am enjoying life but what next and i am working for whom when i you know made a little assessment i am working for many of workers thousands of workers i am working for income tax department i am working for electricity department i am working for sales tax department i am working for banks having taken loan i am paying them interest repaying their amounts they are sitting quietly in their you know air conditioned big offices and making me work for them i mean such thoughts started coming to me and uh, that was the time when my maternal uncle uh, my first guru 
he he used i we were in touch with him one day he called me and uh, told me you start meditating for 5 minutes every day he just told me you meditate for 5 minutes you did not tell him anything about what we are going through oh, i didn't tell i didn't tell him anything he just called me and told this was the coincidence which took place something going on in my mind and he called me and told me you meditate for 5 minutes i said okay we had lot of respect for him because he was a bal brahmachari he left his house at the age of 15 so out of respect i told him i'll do it he gave me some mantra i started meditating for 5 minutes that 5 minutes went on for 15 minutes it went on for 5 hours in in a span of 5 6 months i went so deep into meditation i was meditating for hours and hours hours and hours i mean then that a point came where i found it difficult to ride on both the horses i found this to be quite interesting it, i was gaining so much experience out of meditation new revelations then i decided to quit my business i said i will follow this path when was this uh, when did this happen uh, you know the when did your guru uh, when did your guru tell you to meditate and when did you leave the business uh, he told me 92 92 93 he told he started this process i went on following him then around 94 95 i decided to quit it was uh, a hot yoga practices which he was doing and when i went deeper into it he gave me all the techniques of hot yoga which included a lot of uh, yogic kriyas you know starting from neti dhoti anima i used to swallow 5 meters of cotton cloth 5 meters long cotton cloth we both used to swallow and then take it out that was a yogic practice kundalini yoga he made me do i used to have levitation then out of body experience all this became you know it was just out of the world so the thought came that there is something more to my life than the materialistic world i went on going in my inner self and uh, around 95 uh, we met swami ji uh, purnanda swami ji he was our second guru my mama ji my maternal uncle after those 2 3 years of intense practices and i decided to quit he used to tell me that uh, i will get enlightened after 2 3 births and you will take more time he used to tell me that you know i am i am myself not reached that state we didn't know what is enlightenment we didn't know what is samadhi we didn't know what is moksha mukti we were just following mama ji a thought started coming in my mind if there is something like that ultimate which mama ji is trying to achieve if something is like that exist then i should be able to get to that state in this birth itself i i don't i can't i can't trust my future births and somebody should be there who can take me to that state this thought went on for almost 2 months very intensely in fact my i lost my meditation those hours and hours of meditation only this thought was going on that i want to get into that state and there should be someone who can take me to that state because mama ji himself is not sure he can get to that state in 2 months a coincidence took place where this purnanda swami ji came to hyderabad one of our common friend who used to come to mama ji and to that swami ji he told mama ji that there some saint has come from sri selam if you wish i can you know make you meet him that was the first meeting which i had with swami ji and my mama ji took me to swami ji so here the you know the miracle happened is the first guru took a disciple to the second guru beautiful and no one else that swami ji and both of us me and my maternal uncle mama ji my first guru there was some discussion which mama ji was doing with swami ji i was i was zero in spiritual subject as such so mama ji and he was discussing some one question which my mama ji asked swami ji about 
out of body experience uh, astral travel you know piercing the fourth fifth sixth chakra in kundalini marga swami ji's answer he made an answer in a lighter way so much impacted that my mind that such an ultimate subject if anyone can speak in such a lighter way he definitely has a control over it so after that mama ji anyway never went to swami ji what did swami ji say uh i am not able to reveal that right now acha okay but that you know that it was such a statement that, that you felt he knew everything about him known of my mind i didn't know anything about it do mama ji used to talk about that it is very difficult to pierce the chakra it is very difficult to you know make astral travel it is so difficult to you know let the shakti meet shiva in the sahasra and he was asking all this to swami ji and swami ji in lighter when he replied to that it it blew off my mind the swami ji was did not seem to feel it was as difficult as mama ji felt it was no no not at all he was very casual in replying to that question of mama ji mama ji was very serious and swami ji that's very easy is very easy you do like this and it will be over <laughs> when when for years and years i was listening from mama ji that is so difficult and it would take two three births to achieve that and swami ji says it is so easy that blew off my mind i came and shared with guru ma we both then we went to swami ji yeah after then we went to swami ji we went to sri selam met him we came back anyway mama ji didn't like so much that we started going to swami ji and uh, it so happened that swami ji had a kidney operation so he was in hyderabad for a lot of time and uh, doctor he was a tamilian doctors advised him to eat only uh, fulka something Oranges. of wheat he was a rice eater and uh, so initially yeah. they asked him to take only liquids soups and then fulka among his followers nobody knows how to make soup he used to send his assistant to our house and ask guru ma if she can make soup for swami ji she was happily she started making soup for swami ji every day they used to come take soup then after some time they asked if fulka can be made you know thin fulkas which we are experts correct being from rajasthan north india so she started making fulkas for swami ji that is how we had an opportunity of meeting swami ji sometimes and then we came very close then our spiritual journey started from with swami ji that was which year started from 95 96 onwards and uh, 99 you know within a span of 3 4 years swami ji gave us that enlightened state we both got enlightened in the year 1999 can you tell me a little about what happened precisely before that i can only share with you what swami ji used to say that uh, my asking of soup from jain put me into soup <laughs> <laughs> in such like that when he used to make sometimes some statements I, i in my own experience i think virtually every guru i've met has an excellent sense of humor okay <laughs> <laughs> your your soup put me into soup he used to say and he used to always only call us jain jain so we came very close we used to go then we bought a house in sri salam next to his yeah. ashram then we used to get him to our house he used to stay for 15 15 days one month in our house then he started you know using a term he used to whenever we used to go from a distance he would look at us and he would tell his disciples jain is coming jain is a pain for me <laughs> <laughs> he is a good good language control over english it appears <laughs> oh, very good so good jain is a pain and <laughs> 
Content was the exact experience of what, like, <clears throat> what exactly happened when you say Swami Ji gave it to you. Did he manifest it for uh, you? <clears throat> the, nothing of that sort happened. It was I mean, gradual. It was gradual. It is basically enlightened state is nothing but a culmination of whatever you have been going through a process. Right. Okay. Culminates. Yeah. So you drop the ego. Uh, yeah. I mean, there is no no shakti path or no miracle or he did something special, nothing of that sort. And our, you know, when with uh, in Hatha Yoga practices with my Mamaji, almost around 15, 18 hours I used to meditate. Morning, evening, night, 2 o'clock I will wake up. There was no schedule as such. After going to Swamiji, indirectly he started reducing my meditation. I used to do a lot of pranayam, heavy. I remember, you know, when we went to Kedarnath. Badrinath. Badrinath. It was minus 5, there is snow everywhere. Minus 5 degree temperature, snow everywhere. And my pranayama used to create so much heat in my body. I used to open up all my clothes and there will be sweat in that minus, you know, temperature. Oh. That much of intense pranayama I used to do. Like the stuff will be soaked with the sweat. We can just squeeze it out. Oh, sweat. You also, Gurma? Not so much. Not so much. She used to do. You were not into Hatha Yoga. You were into Seva, correct? Yeah. Yeah, she was doing some meditation. I did pranayam little, but the other ones, Shitali. Yeah, she used to do that, you know. Toti, Neti, all that I used to. So, with Swamiji, when, when we came close to Swami, this is what when we were following Mamaji and we started coming to Swamiji. In that spillover, switchover phase, I was continuing what I was continuing my practices. And without our knowledge, Swamiji started reducing my pranayam. He started reducing my meditation also. When I used to meditate in ashram, in Swamiji's ashram, Swamiji used to sit somewhere with Guruma. He would talk about some subject and I would meditate in the some meditation hall. He used to call me. He would send someone and call me. Initially, I remember I used to feel bad. Why Swamiji is calling me in the midst of my meditation? Why is he disturbing my meditation? I never knew that it was for my evolution. Disturbing meditation was for my evolution. I never knew that. After some time, meditation becomes zero. Pranayam became zero. And we started evolving at jet speed. Every session with Swamiji for one hour, two hours, three hours, we would feel we are in a different state. He would give purest knowledge. We won't remember that knowledge because his the uh, terms which he used to use, we were not exposed to those terms. When we were with Mamaji, he would you know talk about Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Puran, all that. Swamiji never referred to any shastras, any scriptures. Just the essence of everything, purest form of knowledge. And now we realize that it used to be with Shakti path. He would give his Shakti along with those, that, you know, Jnana. And listening to that, which Swamiji used to say, we used to feel a different state. After half an hour, we would not even remember one word as to what Swamiji has told us. Nothing we used to remember. But that state, we used to feel this is how the process went on, went on, went on for three, four years. And one day suddenly we both, since morning, that 8th December 1999, we both were in a different state. The whole universe became one for us. A lot of bliss, fountain of bliss was inside us. And after uh, probably since morning I was feeling that, I didn't know Guru Mai is feeling that. After some breakfast, I told us that I am feeling, you know, this, this, this. She says, exactly, this is what I am also feeling since morning. We both were feeling oneness in the whole universe, lot of bliss, 
it was a different state very difficult to bring it in words then when we met swami ji swami ji was, was in our house that day so we went and expressed to swami ji that this is what we are feeling he said this is the ultimate enlightened state you be in this state till eternity you will be in this state and that's all since then we are in the same state it has never left you no <clears throat> and after you know after that i think around 8 9 months later swami ji left his body yeah he left his body he was about to ask you is he still there in 2000 uh, he left his body april 2000 he was there in sri selam since 1969 we used to go to sri selam since maybe 1965 onwards we never knew about swami ji nobody talked about swami ji and his last 3 4 years we felt as if he was waiting for us he he had several disciples but he was very very low profile he never talked on mic never talked even in the general public also if there is if there is a group of 10 20 people he can't open his mouth he won't utter a word he was very good at one to one he had all the knowledge in the world about mantra sri vidya upasana havan yagya kundalini yoga everything tantra mantra everything all his disciples they took the benefit of the other aspect of spirituality that is puja mantra yantra havan yagya nobody took the essence of that knowledge some of swami ji was not happy with all that not happy in the sense he used to give them because they were interested in those those things when we came to swami ji and we were interested only in the subject <clears throat> the spiritual highest knowledge he used to be so happy you know sharing everything which he had wonderful in his last days once i saw him he was in our house he was in tears we didn't understand we asked swami ji why tears he said jane i have been waiting all my life for someone to take this essence of knowledge from me only two of you could take all others got engrossed in every other ritual you know puja part all those things but the real treasure of mine is this which you both took and i am very very happy about it i wanted others also to take but unfortunately they couldn't but i am happy that at least two of you could take so we were you know we had that grace of that enlightened saint like swami ji even his neighbors in the ashram didn't know what state he is so much was hidden you know so much of his state was hidden <clears throat> how did the movement to a spiritual guru yeah. how did that happen why did we become a guru ha huh. acha okay how did it happen rather for us ha huh. becoming guru ha huh. actually we had no idea no interest in becoming guru we were very happy with our state swami ji left his body in 2000 doing nothing no business jobless sitting at home and total peace total happiness inner joy it went on for you know couple of years like this without doing anything without teaching anything to anyone those people some of them who knew that we were in spirituality occasionally they used to come to us asking about meditation you know discussion on some subject and we used to reveal whatever swami ji revealed to us we used to reveal them and it used to be the highest right from whether god exists or not how does universe operates how the universe sustains how the universe got manifested 
you know vibrations uh, everything they used to ask and it just comes out and i knew that this is not my subject because i was never exposed to this subject i never read any spiritual books no shastras no scriptures did not listen to any other saint or guru even up till the present moment yeah he was guruji was never interested in reading any books yeah what about you guruma i used to read a lot spiritual spiritual guru that's spiritual we both are not you know in a way spiritual aspirants as such we are very uh, not Sorry. not well read no scriptures for you it was a natural uh, uh, experience which is the highest and best yeah it was just natural in fact when we used to go to swami ji all those people who were around swami ji and his disciples and uh, many uh, scholars pandits they used to sit with swami ji and sometimes discuss about you know some vedas upanishads vedic pandits famous vedic pandits used to come to swami ji for discussion and swami ji used to tell them such secrets from vedas which even they used to get surprised as to they are famous vedic pandits and they didn't know about those secrets this is how he used to reveal when we used to tell swami ji that swami ji we have we don't know about scriptures we don't know how many vedas exist what is upanishad what is bhagavad gita between bhagavad puran and bhagavad gita we didn't know the difference we were totally zero swami ji do we need to read all this just in is to say no you have the advantage you are a clean slate you know nothing so i can write whatever i want to write on your slate and that advantage we get we got everyone who used to come he would argue or discuss but swami ji it is written in that scripture like this bhagavad gita says this buddha said this you know then that absorption would be less correct correct we had no questions we had nothing to argue we had no background of scriptures he used to be very happy i can write jain whatever i want to write all these people their slate is already full of writing and for me to write something i i need to find some space and even if i write something it gets it gets lost in other writing so this is why they are not able to evolve that advantage we had absolutely So, so then how did yeah how did the movement uh, no couple of years it just passed on like this then some people who got benefited my friends relatives they they brought some unknown people then we started organizing sessions in someone's house in some kitty parties i mean some people to go started to calling parties also and as the ladies groups our friends started calling why don't you come to our house we have a kitty party we can talk about this subject so okay we will come like that we started going slowly you know by word of mouth it it went on spreading then people started calling us for talks we were, we used to go for talks and actually guruji was very good at yoga so even your uh, yoga sessions we used to have so yeah. this is how you know slowly slowly gradually so it was again a natural evolution absolute natural level there was we had no nothing in my mind nothing in mind that we should become a guru we should read something we should talk we should write books we never imagined that we could have an ashram because we are not from that culture we are totally different culture from businessman culture north indians not exposed to spirituality not exposed to scriptures no discourses we ever listened so it was a natural process then more it it spread to more areas then we started going to different cities we went to us people started calling we had talks discourses in us london so many places all over the world you know i can share uh, my one of very good experience in uh, chicago i when we went there one of our friends friend organized a talk and uh, some 200 people were there in that hall though we were 
unknown in spirituality. Earlier, I had been there as a businessman, but as a spiritual person. And that time, I was not a guru. I was just a speaker, a, a good speaker. So he organized a talk for two hours from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. on a Sunday. He told me, this is U.S., you have to start on dot and end your talk on dot because Monday morning, everyone gets up early, they go office early. So finish it at 6 o'clock. I said, okay. And uh, 4 o'clock, we started talking. When we entered the hall, everyone was looking at us, but nobody stood, nobody greeted, nobody wished us. You know, no greetings at all. Were they uh, whites or were they Indians? Indians. I mean, Indians. mostly Indians, Indians, but there were some local Americans also. And uh, my friend's friend introduced us and we started another you know, talk. The talk went on in, in such manner that two hours, I didn't realize that I spoke for two hours. I, I used to stand and speak in those days. <laughs> two hours, audience was spellbound. Suddenly, I, I realized that it must have been six o'clock or so. I looked at my watch. It was exactly 6 p.m. I stopped my talk in between. I said, uh, I think it's time that we can stop this talk and uh, maybe some other opportunity we will have. We will carry on this subject. For five minutes, no reaction. Nobody stood up. And among the audience, two, three people, they stood up. They requested me. They said, you have been talking for two hours. And the subject is so interesting. If you don't mind, we would like to listen to you more. I said, I have no problem. I came only for this. But I was told that I shouldn't, you know, delay it beyond 6 p.m. He said, if you don't mind, I will, I will make a request to the audience. Whoever wants to go, they can go. So that interested people can continue and you can talk. I said, fine, I don't mind anybody going away. He announced that whoever wants to go, they can go. He waited for five minutes. He made second announcement, waited for five minutes. Not even one person went out of the hall. Then he requested me, please continue. I continued. Seven o'clock I stopped. They said, please continue. Eight o'clock I stopped. Nine o'clock finally. They said they have to close. <laughs> All people said they have to close the hall now. <laughs> 9 p.m. we stopped. And 80% of those 200 people were on the stage. They were hugging, they were, you know, touching our feet, they were crying. It was such an amazing session, I can't forget it. So we were there in Chicago for four days. Before we landed in Chicago, my friend told, with great difficulty, I could organize this session in a short notice. Here, people, they book, you know, such talks six months in advance. Everything There's is a... planned beforehand. Oh, that's true. They're very particular. They're very particular. Mm -hmm. Famous speakers, famous gurus, they fix in six months in advance. Whole year schedule is made here. That is how the organizations work here. So with great difficulty, in a short notice, one program he organized for us. And uh, after that, Chicago, we were there for three more days. That talk in that hall, three more days we were there. In those three days, we had to go to six places to give talks. Wow. On an instant notice, they requested, can you please come tomorrow morning to our place? Can you give a talk? Somebody in the evening, somebody day after tomorrow. I told my friend, you have been telling me that I have to fix for six months in advance and here not even eight hours time they are able, they are giving me. <laughs> he said, it's a magic I have never seen like this. I mean, I'm just feeling, sharing with you. That no, no, it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Could be felt. So this and, is the way it works, inspiration. When, you, and, know. Uh, you know, it was free. We didn't charge anything for the whole trip. I mean, we went to other cities. Which one? Uh, Harrisburg, uh, yeah. Harrisburg, Boston. Harvard. Hmm? Harvard, yeah. Harvard also, we had a meeting with Harvard uh, chief uh, there. We didn't charge anything from anyone. All those people in US, 
I mean, they invited to their houses. We went to their houses. They said, why did you come to US? First question, you are not charging anything. You are not taking any money. You came with your own expenditure. You booked your flight. You are staying in a hotel. Not even one rupee you are charging. Why did you come to US? I said, I just came to share my joy. I, I came to share my joy. It was unbelievable. They said, we have not seen anyone putting, you know, spending money from their pocket and just trying to share their joy like this. People were in tears. Their life is totally different. Very, very different. When we went to somebody's house in big mansion, you know, five acres of land, 40,000 square feet of their house, 10 bedrooms, four drawing rooms, and only two souls living in that house. <laughs> they were crying before us. They said, I have to meet my son who stays two kilometers away from me. I have to take an appointment to meet my grandchildren. This is how the life there was. Anyway, this is the experience. And uh, natural progression was that uh, people started calling us Guru, 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 Guru. So we became a Guru. <laughs> this is the natural progression which you know and what is Guruma's actual name that's okay to ask isn't it uh, Kusum K-U-S-U-M Kusum Jain Kusum Jain so now can I ask you so you left your business behind you were not working but so how was money happening <laughs> or had you saved enough <laughs> Some, that's the biggest question mark we have in our minds yeah, also. <laughs> even I couldn't get that answer for myself even today, we don't charge anything for ourselves. All our programs are free, except our Rishikesh, you know, we have retreats. Yeah, correct. Whatever expenditure is there, you know, they are. <clears throat> every, almost every weekend, I used to be in Bombay. Hundreds of programs in Bombay, we conducted. <laughs> I mean, around a couple of years ago. So, it's just Swamiji's grace. Everything was taken care of. But you must have saved, I presume, in the during your businessman media. Very little. Achha? When I left my business, the saving was sufficient to maintain my lifestyle for two, three years. My father used to ask me, for two, three years, we will sustain our lifestyle. What will we do after two, three years? I said, I don't know what we will do. Swamiji has offered me to shift to his ashram if we find difficulty in continuing to live in the city. So that is one place where we can shift. Swamiji has guaranteed that I'll take care of your family. My children were small. My daughter was four or five years. My son was eight years. Everybody used to taunt me. How can you leave your business? What will happen to your children? How will they grow up? How will they get married? I said, I don't know anything. I have no answer to this. But my priority today is my spirituality. I am getting into it. So, when my father used to tell me, I said, I can only guarantee that we all will live together. I will never abandon the family. That guarantee I can give you. I may not be able to give you that lifestyle which we had enjoyed till then. Maybe we have to live that entire family in a 10 by 10 room. You have to be prepared. And if I am, if I am required to earn money, I'll get into some job. I'll do something. I'll take care of the family. I will never ever abandon family. I'll always be with you. He said, this assurance is enough for me. You pursue your spirituality. Beautiful. It is very difficult for a father to allow the son, the only son now. I had one brother, elder brother, who died in plane accident. From Pune to Hyderabad, Vayudu, one plane got crashed no, in 89. After that, I was the only son. Total family was dependent on me. But my father, oh no, I don't know what kind of trust belief he had. And to tell you, he was the first disciple of Swamiji before me. Before we started going to Swamiji, he was going to Swamiji. See. So he also had that belief, trust, and my assurance that we live together. He said, you pursue your spirituality. And uh, till date, for 25 years, I don't know how things are getting managed. It's magical. 
like Guru Ma said, that question still lingers around in my mind also as to how it got managed for 25 years. Amazing. And I would have thought you had all pl planned it all out because of your businessman. No planning, not, no thought at all. Whatever saving was there, that was handed over to father. I said, you, you run the family. My children are with you. We both used to go to Swamiji, leaving behind five-year-old and eight-year-old children with my parents. And we would be free. They would take care. They only brought up our children. Now, anyway, both of them are married. The daughter is in Bombay. My son, Hyderabad, he has two children. Everything is perfect. I believe, or I started believing, or we started believing. Whenever I say I, it means we both. Sure, sure. <laughs> I, I get that now. <laughs> we believe now in spirituality. If you are spreading good words of a higher entity like cosmos or the supreme consciousness, you know, we are we are representative of the Supreme Consciousness now. Correct. We are working for the Supreme Consciousness now. So we believe that when we take care of that entity in the best possible manner, totally surrendered, that entity will take care of you in the best possible manner. Yeah, beautiful. It's 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 wonderful. This, I mean, even though that entity is an invisible entity. That supreme consciousness is not a form. I am not talking of Krishna, Rama, Shiva. That entity which is omnipresent and omnipotent. For that entity to take care of one soul, two souls or five souls is nothing. And in fact, we also started believing that the whole universe has got manifested in such a way that all 84 lakh species... They don't have to earn for their living. Only humans earn for their living. And that is only out of their ego. Because they have not surrendered to that entity. They think they have to earn for their living. How come all 84 lakh species are able to live peacefully, healthy and long life? All of them live their life. We are only having a lot of diseases, fights, enmities, because we have that ego of living on our own. This we realized. We are living for that entity. That entity will take care. Beautiful. Last 25 years, it has been taking care so well. I mean, just believe 91 years old, father living with us, 8 hours, 10 hours on computer, eating all kinds of food, enjoying life totally. What about uh, you also, uh, do you have any sort of uh, you know, diet rest restrictions? I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, as, as, as gurus, do you teach your people to have a particular... Uh, I'm having a good laughing scene here. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are laughing here. <laughs> uh, we don't have fasting, we have twisting. <laughs> Superb, sounds good. <laughs> so... Um, can I ask you, what is your equation with, uh, and what's your understanding of God and, you know, what's your equation? Just to come to Swami what, what would you say? Sorry? Yeah. Before that, just trying to share. Swamiji's disciples used to come to him on Shivratri days and, you know, Janmashtami. And they used to boast that, Swamiji, I am on fast, I am on fast. Why you are on fast? Swamiji, it is Shivratri. Oh, you are on fast? Get out of my ashram. He would tell his disciples to get out of his ashram. He said, Swamiji, today Shivratri, I am on fast. He said, Shivratri is not for fast, it is only for feasting. No fasting, only feasting. So we have no diet restrictions, only we are vegetarians. And in vegetarian, no restrictions whatsoever. When we were following Mamaji, Hatha Yoga practices, we had a lot of restrictions. For four years, we went through bland food. You know, I, I, my weight was 80 kilos. It came down to 45 kilos. My goodness. <laughs> it became like a skeleton. If I show you my old picture in those days of my Hatha Yoga practices, I became like a skeleton. Bland food, 
everyday drink was kriyas no spices you know no onions all this tamsik the so called tamsik food we we didn't use Sorry. total sattvic swami ji started making us you know eat everything he brought us into such a normal state then we realize being a spiritual being or an enlightened being is 100% being a natural being any condition whatsoever takes you away from your natural being this was the realization that's very interesting so we we eat pizza pasta momos burger but there is a natural moderation i presume yeah obviously that body itself will you know signal but sometimes we indulge also no moderation very good <laughs> that's amazing night 1 o'clock our followers will come we chit chat for 2 hours 3 hours all spiritual discussions in sitting in coffee shop we forget we are in the coffee shop sitting in restaurants we forget we are in a restaurant you know the sessions go on and go on everywhere where we are so um, what exactly is the uh, what shall i say essence of your teaching what do you teach your people <laughs> for me also frankly i have no reply to this many people ask me what do you teach you know even if even if i think for an hour i won't get an answer as to what i teach it just emerges spontaneously yeah that's all there is no specific pattern there is no specific subject but yes we try to bring out the best of their natural being their original being we we take everyone to their source i started calling it home coming you know every soul has to like we go out of our house for office or or for work we come back home we go on you know maybe travel as a tourist however good places you know foreign countries we go stay in five star seven star 10 star hotels eventually you get peace when you come back your house totally however small it could be a small flat one bedroom two bedroom flat <laughs> seven star hotel also would not give that peace which you get in your house absolutely right the concept is home coming peace is in your home so the soul also will get ultimate peace when it goes to its original home that is the supreme consciousness so final peace rest is in rest in peace rip is that rip is not leaving the body rip is when the soul merges into that supreme consciousness becomes one with the supreme consciousness then it is totally at peace so this is i think the essence of our teaching but otherwise we talk everything on this planet relationship parenting you know vibrations thinking mind god uh, rituals uh, i mean any uh, uh, so any um, what would you call experiences or divine visions or anything like that not that i believe in it i'm just asking you <coughs> asking about us mm. there has been innumerable experiences uh, revelations uh, but the swami ji's teaching or grace is such that we also don't bother about them in fact we tell people not to bother about experiences and not to crave for experiences correct we had all kinds of experiences levitation you know astral travel Sorry. everything i mean lights everything in a router nada sound smell emanating from your inside inner self everything but we we don't bother about any of those experiences beautiful and What? your relationship uh, anyway i think that is answered so i won't get into that one question i wanted to ask you now you've been uh, i don't think you see uh, uh, in 
Is there somebody you have to speak to, uh, Guruji? No, no, no. They are now. They are there. Some now the Zoom people have come online. Ah, okay. In another computer, they are there. Ah, okay. Now, so uh, I, I, you always maintain that there is no separation between the spiritual life and the uh, material life. Would you want to uh, elaborate a little on that? True. Spirituality is all inclusive. Yeah. Spirituality cannot be separated from anything. Because when we are talking of the Supreme Consciousness, which is formless, and when we say omnipresent, omnipresent means that it includes everything. Material objects, they are not omnipresent. So they are not all inclusive. But spirituality is all inclusive. And uh, we have been uh, advocating our followers Keep doing everything, live a normal life, business, making money, expansion, do whatever you want to do. But do with spiritual perception. In spirituality, we are trying to give you know perception of spirituality to people. It is something like uh, icing on the cake. Cake is the world. But without a proper icing, you will not enjoy the cake. And you keep changing the icing. So we are just trying to give that icing on the cake, on the worldly life, the cake of worldly life, on that spiritual icing. That is making their lives beautiful. Wonderful. So um, what do you think is the relationship uh, 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 you know, that, uh, that a spiritual person should have with money? Well, oh, Money, money. Enjoy money. The more you have, it's better. <laughs> you can enjoy it more. You can spread yeah. it more. You can. You can. Money is not a problem. Money is not an obstacle. Provided your focus is not only on the money. Your focus has to be on your inner self. Your focus has to be on the Supreme Consciousness. See that Supreme Consciousness is in everything, in every being, in every object. Then money is not an obstacle. But if your focus is only on money, then it is not only obstacle in your spiritual progress, it is the biggest obstacle in your own peace. Absolutely. So being wealthy, being money-minded, money not money-minded, having money, or being wealthy is not a problem. Raja Janak was wealthy. We also live in a bungalow here in Hyderabad. We have our own cars. But focus is not on that. And when we left business, before we were in business, I mean, I can just share that when I used to come to Bombay in mid-80s, I used to stay in Oberoi. And in a suet, in those days, very few people would afford you know, right. a suet. It used to cost 25, 30,000 in those days. Oh. And uh, after that, when I quit my business, we hardly had any saving. We started moving in RTC buses. From that to this level, overnight RTC buses, not the, today's buses, AC, sleeper, ordinary buses, we used to travel in autos, not even a moment, me or Guruma or our family members felt bad that from what to what we came. Wonderful. This, this is spiritual state. Yes. Your feeling is the same. Material object should not change your feeling. If you are into that state, then whether you have money or you don't have money or you have more money doesn't matter. If your feeling is constant, spirituality is all about uh, perception. You know, when you feel sad, you feel sorrowful sometimes, you get irritated, you get angry. It is only because of some wrong notion and some wrong perception that you feel like this. The moment you get the right perception, 
anger vanishes. <clears throat> Your pain, sorrows, they vanish. You start celebrating. You start feeling joyful. Situation remains the same. Situation is the same. A different perception brings out, brings you out to another state, lifts you to another state. Just a change in perception. So we believe spirituality is all about perceptions. People okay, don't have right perceptions. Absolutely beautiful. And we give, you know, we tell everyone, have baskets of perceptions. I'll give you hundreds of perceptions and you apply these perceptions to whichever situation they are applicable and be joyful, be happy. Don't feel sorrow, don't feel pain. Yeah. How receptive have your followers been? How many of them are in a space of joy? I mean, just as a, I mean, and obviously you're not going to be able to give me be receptive. Advice, but you, would you say that your followers are shifting, changing? How receptive are they to the teaching? No, no. The real followers are not shifting, not changing. They are evolving. They are en enjoying and enlightening. Shifting and changing within themselves, I mean. Not. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. There's a great shift. I thought ch shifting and changing to gurus. Oh, no, no. No, that also happens. That happens for sure. Yeah, but I meant changing. <laughs> there's, a, there's a great change. There's a great shift. They are. They also feel, you know, uh, evolved on a daily basis, on a movement basis. Everyone is is like flying. They don't walk. Everyone. So, uh, uh, can you tell me for I mean, how many followers? How big is the uh, constituency, so to speak? I, I, I hope you don't mind my asking this question, but just a rough estimate. Very small kingdom. <laughs> they can put <laughs> on fingers. So we are <laughs> such great global guru. Very few followers. Very few. Because the subject is not attractive to everyone. It doesn't experience. Problem is, we don't find our followers to anything. We have closed everyone's puja rooms. I am closing temples. They have stopped following rituals. Because they are always in that state of bliss. They are always seeing that consciousness in everyone. So, when we are not binding them to anything, I find most of the people are not able to live in such a liberated style of living. Everyone wants to want some binding or the other. Early morning, get up along with the sunrise, do this, do that. If nothing, at least do meditation. We don't even force our people to do meditation, even though we conduct meditation sessions. But we don't bind them to even meditation sessions. You meditate, you don't meditate, it doesn't matter. Because how much you will meditate? One hour, two hours? What about rest 22 hours? One hour you meditate and people think that they have done a great thing by meditating for one hour. I shift them to 23 hours that what is important is that 23 hours, not one hour. In these 23 hours, what kind of life, what kind of thinking pattern, what kind of approach, what is that you require, what kind of perception, what kind of peace. So we try to give them this 23 hours, you know, what they need to do. Fantastic. And uh, we have been very strongly telling people, Meditation is basically suppression. You are suppressing your thoughts. In meditation, we are suppressing our mind. And mind's nature is not to remain suppressed for long. It springs back. Meditation is not suppression of mind. Real meditation is separation of mind. Beautiful Most of the people are under wrong impression that meditation is about suppression. They, people ask me, 
I meditate, I'm not able to meditate for long. I said, what do you do? I said, meditation is, uh, the objective of meditation is same. I said, what same? Everywhere. He said, everywhere it is the same that we have to become thoughtless. I said, no, meditation is about thoughtfulness. Why do you, you know, get scared of thinking? Why do you fear thoughts? Allow the mind to think whatever it wants to think. Why do you bother? You are not the mind. Why do you bother what mind does? You separate yourself from the mind and enjoy whatever mind is doing. Beautiful. And this state many of our followers have achieved. They don't meditate. They don't meditate, but they are always in a state of meditation. Fantastic. Are you aware of uh, J. Krishnamurti? I don't know whether you... Yeah, Jiddu Krishnamurti. He also advocates a similar path only. Those people who have really understood spirituality, those people who have really evolved, those people who are enjoying that highest state, they will never be able to bind anyone into you know some wrong approach. You know, we have uh, uh, Rishikesh retreats. Every year we go there for three, four days. Morning to evening we have there because people have come from throughout the country. We have some schedules, morning meditation, Ganga Ghat. We have satsang, evening we have question answers, sessions. Uh, night we have Ganga, the bhajan, dance, everything we have. At the end of the third day, most of the people ask, now when we go back home, what do we do? They want some you know, fixed regime, some pattern. We say, do whatever you want to do. We cannot bind you to anything because we are here to liberate you. Those who have come to this world to liberate you, they cannot bind you. We just cannot bind. And that is why don't not many people stick to us. It's fantastic. So we have a handful of followers. With great difficulty, we we are we are holding on to them. <laughs> but whoever is there, I mean, we feel fully satisfied, contented that they are real, they are living that real life, unbothered of physical matter, unbothered of mental state, because they are seeing their physical body separate, mind separate, senses separate. And they are in a state where nothing matters to them. And they know that they are going to live eternally even without the body. They are going to live eternally even without the mind. That is the state they are enjoying. That's it. That's amazing. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about uh, the book that you've written and the other books you're planning to write. Or... Ask Gandhi and Ritu. <laughs> 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 I'm planning to write. I them, you write on this, you write on this subject, you write on this subject. Anyway, there are a couple of books. And you did say that you're a good delegator, isn't it? Yeah, a very good delegator. I enjoy it. You know, uh, I used to be eight hours in my office and I used to work not more than two hours. You won't believe. The rest of the six hours used to be a torture for me to be in the office. I had to be there, so I used to be there. I would sleep for one or two hours. In those days, Stardust, Film Fair. I used to work for that group. I used to be the <laughs> editor of Society Magazine. <laughs> they were scriptures, but yes, Stardust, Film Fair. Even today, I am updated on what is happening in Bollywood because all my young followers have to match with their you know, thought process interest. So, a couple of books are in the process. One book uh, we are trying to write is uh, Sahastra Guru. Most of our people have beautiful revelations from anything which they look around. You know, they look, around, they look at a TV, they have a revelation. They look at a tree, they have a revelation. Somebody is looking at the you know sweet shop where they are making jalebi and is revealing something, spiritual subject. So we are bringing out a book on you know, these revelations, which would be like guru in every aspect of life. You have you have gurus, millions of gurus in the world, like Lord Dattatre had 24 gurus. 
we are trying to make people see guru in everything of their life everything is teaching something or the other beautiful so that is one beautiful book coming out anyway there are couple of books and uh, there is one beautiful campaign we have come out with worldwide campaign i don't know if you are aware or not it is clean the actually i am not aware you, you can tell me about we we recently met uh, president of india also murmu ji last week yeah he had sent me a picture of that yeah. so this campaign is exactly what it is clean the cosmos hmm swachh brahmand you know everyone is cleaning the streets garbage uh thrown on the streets but what about the garbage of negativity in the cosmos sir? nobody is working towards that so our campaign is all about cleaning the cosmos of its negativity that garbage which has become too much today's crime terrorism nationalism or hatred or enmity it is all because the cosmic in the cosmos the too much of negative vibrations and less of positive vibrations and we are caught in a vicious cycle we are influenced by the cosmic vibrations we become negative we emanate negative thoughts again we strengthen negative vibrations in the cosmos others get influenced our mind has broadcasting and a receiver it has both so we are receiving negative vibrations we are broadcasting negative vibrations to break this chain of vicious cycle and to generate a virtuous cycle of positive vibrations we have started this campaign of clean the cosmos where we are trying to promote positivity some positive vibrations seeking forgiveness from all the souls of the universe forgiving all the souls you know there are five prayers which we decided but it doesn't matter whether we do those five prayers or through other means offering gratitude strengthens positive vibrations so beautiful uh, campaign we want to take it throughout the world and uh, talk more about positivity positivity somewhere it has got lost even though everyone talks about positivity but not as a campaign not bringing people together on a common platform and create you know this type of a campaign you just thought but sometimes you know in this um, i mean this is the experience uh, i think many people have had that they then start fearing negativity and they try and suppress negativity there's a lot of that also happening you know because if you emphasize positivity then what is happening is that in negativity seems like an enemy and you don't want it we are not suppressing negativity that is the beauty of this we are trying to neutralize see you have acidity you try to suppress acidity it won't it will flare up but if you take an antacid it will neutralize so we are making people you know seek forgiveness from all the souls of the universe this itself has done magical transformation in their personality in their life situations the moment you seek forgiveness from someone and offer gratitude there is a, there is a sudden shift in a situation in the life of the people experiencing this and you know like loka samasta sukhino bhavantu we are praying for everyone's well being and happiness our swami ji used to tell us one thing i'll share with you uh like your daughter is not getting married people go to temples you know they make prayers and uh, pray god for getting the <coughs> married daughter married our swami ji's concept was totally different he used to say if your daughter is not getting married pray for every daughter's marriage in the universe who is not getting married Oh, lovely. Oh, beautiful. Pray only for your daughter, but pray for all those daughters who are not getting married. And while praying for all those daughters, your daughter also becomes part of that prayer. 
and an expanded prayer works much faster than a contracted prayer. Beautiful. Amazing concept. Likewise, you are sick. Don't ask for you know health only for you. Ask for good health of everyone in the universe. Who is going through some sickness? You will become fine. How beautiful. You want to be happy? Don't ask happiness only for yourself. Ask happiness for all the souls in the universe. This is we call Loka, Samasta, Sukhino, Bhavantu. May all the souls in the universe be happy. You, are, you become part of all the souls and you will automatically become happy. These are the kind of prayers we are trying. To, they, they will not suppress negativity. No, no. They will spread positivity so much that negativity will get neutralized. Beautiful. We are trying to neutralize negativity. Very, very beautiful. So, so yeah. Vijay, I have had a wonderful uh, time. It's been a really wonderful experience. All enjoyed. I think everyone enjoyed. There are some more people you can look at them on TV. Uh, online. Right. 